So there's hundreds, if not thousands of videos and reviews on eXp talking about how amazing the company is and all the things. And I wanted to do a video actually talking about and discussing the worst reviews I could find on eXp Realty. And the crazy thing is, is literally there's thousands of reviews. You can go out there and search all of them. Indeed, Glassdoor, just Google eXp Realty reviews and you'll see thousands and thousands of amazing reviews. Like there's literally average over four stars out of five, almost on every single website. So I scoured the internet and actually found seven really bad reviews left by real estate agents. There's a lot of reviews out there from employees, you know, working in settlement or, you know, brokerage, broker operations and things like that. So I'm going to talk about the seven worst reviews I can find and then just kind of like give you my point of view of maybe like what happened because there's always a common thread typically when people are angry about a company. So I want to give you some advice and some information on how you can prevent these things if you're looking at coming into eXp. So if you want to know the seven worst reviews that I found on eXp Realty, stay tuned. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is your host, Jesse Dow, coming to you with another episode of the Cloud Based Brokerage. And if you want to know everything from revenue share to real estate right here at eXp Realty, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, tap that little bell so you're notified each and every time I drop a new video. And honestly, I'm getting so many calls from team leads, real estate agents, brokerage owners, and influencers want to talk about eXp, and I absolutely love it. So if you want to get a hold of me, you got to give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, or even schedule that Zoom down in the description below. However, you want to get a hold of me, I got your back when having a conversation about eXp Realty. So everyone can go inside and be a keyboard warrior, right? Go out there, troll around, write some good reviews, some bad reviews. You know, typically people write reviews when they're in an angry state of mind. You know, it's the one way to get back at the organization. So I was I was pleasantly surprised that there's thousands of very, very good reviews on eXp. And a lot of agents talk a lot about the great things about eXp. What nobody ever really talks about are the bad things about eXp. So I was like, I'm gonna go out there and find the worst reviews I could find And I was able to find seven reviews that were one or two stars. And it was literally the only ones I could find. So if you have more, hit me down in the comment box. If you've had a bad experience with eXp, I want to hear it down in the comment box. Or if you've had a great experience with eXp. So my personal opinion, I'm not going to get into it in this play in this video. Maybe I will. You never know. But I'm going to comment a lot about these reviews. But the first review that I found was actually on Indeed. And it just says, uh, the title is called Empty Promises. And it was written on October 11th, 2022. The agent was in Phoenix, Arizona. And it just says the pros, interesting training online and nice staff, but that's about it. I see a ton of five-star reviews, which I suspect someone, some are from those who benefit because they recruit. Cons, my sponsor was good, but there was a lot of buzz when things overstated and things overstated. The novelty wears off fast, huge favoritism for big recruiting agents. And the rest of us were nothing. Heavy recruiting by others made me embarrassed when I had agents from other companies constantly complaining. EXP was not for me. So back to Remax where I feel valued and supported properly. So here's the deal. EXP isn't for everybody. It might be a great fit. It might not be a great fit for you, but it might be a great fit. Who knows? The reality is, is that agent, when you listen to what they're saying, they were basically sold a bill of goods And in my opinion, this happens a lot. A lot of agents are basically being recruited. They're being told how much money they can make in revenue share and, you know, all the stock they're going to make and all this and that. The reality is, is you need to look at your brokerage as a point of leverage. And then everything else on top of that is how can you accelerate the things you want to get done? So personally, if I'm going to sell real estate and I have to sell real estate at one brokerage, I'm going to pick the one that gives me the most benefits and the biggest value. If you're going to a brokerage to become a recruiter, then you're probably not doing real estate for the right reasons. I personally believe after working for three real estate brokerages that if you are a true builder and somebody that actually wants to build a big, large, thriving organization, and there's the biggest bang for the buck on the back end of that, then I believe the EXP is that place. I have had multiple agents have wild success And here's the thing, they don't recruit. And if you don't want to recruit, you don't have to recruit. Only 12% of the agents at eXp even earn revenue share. Now, they did say something that is something of value, which was the influencer agents do get preferential treatment is what they said. So here's the deal. Over the last few months, eXp has actually hired a new chief 
operating officer that I've been told and what I believe is a no-nonsense policy. So I believe that the days of certain agents getting preferential treatments are going to be limited. And you know, there's some situations that I know firsthand where an agent of influence has been able to influence the way something happens. And does the company at the CEO level, Glenn Sanford, does he stand for that stuff? Absolutely not. There's plenty of agents that you can Google up and find that have been disbarged from EXP Realty for breaking the law and things like that. But I do think that inside of the organization, especially when you go to events, you go to EXP Con Shareholder Summit, you know, I'm an influencer agent, so I can say this, is that a lot of those events are heavily favored towards the big agent attractors. And the reason why is because you go to any event, whether it's Keller Williams, Remax, or whatever, who are they bringing up on stage? They're bringing up the top producing agents that talk about their real estate business. What well, EXP, typically the top producing agents are also the biggest recruiters. So that's the reason why. And they typically have the most influence on social media. They're typically building businesses through social media platforms and things like that. So when you look at the ones with power and the ones that have influence and the ones that are driving big organizations, some of these organizations have you know from zero up to 20,000 agents in them. One agent is, is directly responsible for building a 20,000 agent organization. That is freaking wild. You do not see that. So do they deserve their time on the stage and in front of people? Absolutely. But should there be preferential treatments for those agents? I don't believe so. I believe that we should all have to play by the rules. And quite honestly, I've had my own complaints about this. For example, they tell you when you come to EXP is you cannot use EXP, the verbiage EXP Realty and the handle of any of your social media accounts. So it can't be Jesse Dow EXP Realty on YouTube. It can't be Jesse Dow EXP Realty on Instagram. It can't be Jesse Dow EXP Realty on Facebook. However, when you go out there, you search up EXP Realty, you'll see thousands of agents with that in the handle. Now, because our social media influence is so big, we play by the rules. And I have been notified by EXP multiple times to remove content out of videos because they felt that it was breaking policy. And then you go out and search other agents' information and they're breaking policy as well. But because they're not an influencer, they let them slide. So I do believe that there are certain circumstances that they do let people slide for having clout and not having clout. You know, I believe everyone should have to play by the same rules, but here's the thing. Did they ever penalize me or ever get angry or anything? No, they just send you a note saying, hey, at, on this video, at this minute marker, you said something, you need a disclaimer or you need to remove this, blah, 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 blah. It's like, we all make mistakes. And it's like, I don't have time to go through and sift through every single piece of content. That's what I give my team, the guidelines. And typically it happened on like three out of, you know, thousands of videos. So- it is what it is. Let's move on to review number two. And this was written in March of 2022. And it says, I think for highly active and experienced agents, it's a no brainer because of the profit sharing and knowing a lot of the other agents, you will build a big monthly income outside of the normal sales commission. But for beginner agents, there is no guidance and you're paying a high price for no daily support. I am leaving for a while and then coming back in the future when I see a icon level results. For new agents, get with a local broker that has a team so you can learn to fish. You may not make a lot, but you will learn how to make so much in the future. Okay. So he had some good information in there. He called it profit sharing at eXp. It's not profit sharing. It's actually revenue share. So the difference is profit sharing in a brokerage is when they share the profit that's left over after everyone else is paid at eXp. 50% of every single dollar that goes into eXp, 50% goes back to the agents. And that's where the agents make money through revenue share. Now he says eXp isn't a great brokerage for new agents. And they should line up, join a local brokerage and join a team. And I couldn't disagree with that anymore. Real estate is 87% failure, 87%. Every agent has to start with a brokerage and not 87% of them are starting here at eXp Realty. My true opinion is that you're going to be successful whether you join eXp, Keller Williams, Remax, Century 21, doesn't matter. Winners win. And that's just the facts. Personally, I joined a team, was on it for three months instantly left. I didn't need the team. I learned absolutely nothing with the team. If I was going to advise anyone, I would say you need to start your real estate career with a coach, not on a team with a coach. Team owners rarely pour into their agents. Is there team agents out there, team owners that absolutely pour into their team? Absolutely. But it's very far and few between. So if you are going to join a team, make sure you do a ton of due diligence. You interview a lot of teams because what a lot of them do is promise their agents the world and then deliver nothing. They overpromise and underdeliver. It's a constant throughout the industry. But at eXp, if you join with no experience, they assign you a mentor in your marketplace. So 
if you get assigned a mentor and the mentor is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, you should switch your mentor. You should also interview mentors in your marketplace. So you're not being stuck with someone that you don't collaborate with. They also have a fast start series. So my opinion, when people make those comments is more than likely they didn't onboard properly. More than likely they didn't go through the fast start series. More than likely they didn't meet with their mentor because they're not mentioning any of that. If they actually followed the actual process which is what I always talk about. As I say, if you don't onboard the way it's supposed to be onboarded, if you don't work with the EXP the way you're supposed to work with it, then you're not using it for what it's supposed to design for. And you're going to have failure. This goes for new agents or seasoned agents. But when he talks about successful agents being a place of thriving, I absolutely agree with that. My business went from 12 million, 12 million, 14 million. Then I moved to EXP and it went to 50 million. Then it went to a hundred million. So I do believe that this is an amazing platform for thriving agents, but I do believe that if you are someone that can build a business naturally, which is 13% of the agents that are successful in real estate, I think eXp is a fine place to start, but only you can make that decision. The third review I want to discuss says, this was written in March, 2022. It says, I really like the fact that they have a lot of tools that they provide to agents and all of the training classes. They are very helpful. They have a commission split of 80-20 and an $85 monthly fee which is great considering all the tools they provide. The only issue they have is trying to get a hold of anybody when you have a question or need assistance. I have some forms and I've been trying to get signed for a month and I can't get a hold of anybody. Okay, this is kind of what I was resulting re, or alluding to just a minute ago. She has these forms that need to be signed. I can go on to Workplace Chat, which is a chat tool that we use at eXp. I can go into eXp World. I can talk to somebody live they have seven day a week support inside of eXp world. They also have a hotline number. Your broker has a number. Your broker, you can text them. You can email them. You can call them. There is so much support, but what the problem is and what I've already alluded to is they don't use the proper channels of communication. If you want to just pick up the phone and make a call, you can do that. There's also an onboarding hub that you have direct access to that tells you exactly who to contact. They send you all this information when you start and you apply, but what most people do is they apply and they completely black out. This is why when I help agents onboard, I say, I need you to create a folder that says EXP onboarding. And every email you get, I want you to pull into that folder. And also here's exactly how you get a hold of exactly who you need to get a, get a hold of. As your sponsor, if you worked with me and I was your sponsor, one of your missions is to help your agent onboard. So if there's information that you need signed, when you onboard, it tells you exactly how to make that happen. So- once again, I think you're seeing the common thread here is that if people aren't paying attention and they don't know how to get a hold of someone, then they're running into issues. And I could see that being a big issue. But moving in to my fourth bad comment is this was in June 2021. It says good initial support and links to tons of online training programs, groups, and Verbella connectivity. So it's funny, this guy just said a great onboarding. The last agent said a bad onboarding. Relatively quick responses, which is opposite what you just saw. Rick. Tankers Lee is amazing. New agent directions, explanation of work through needs work, felt abandoned and overwhelmed by the onslaught of information and inability to connect with someone who could walk me through how to do large number of checklists for getting set up, have joined a brick and mortar to get real world help I needed. And it's been smooth sailing since. An overview of or synopsis of what needs done and actual happens and actually happens how to navigate the torrent of emails and information would have been helpful. Mentorship needs some help. Rick Tankersley is wonderful, responsive, knowledgeable, helpful, understanding, patient, takes his time training. So what did I just mention? Is when you're getting set up is you need to set up a folder that says EXP onboarding because it is an onslaught of emails. But here's the problem is it goes step by step. So it's a step one, do this step. And once you complete that, you go to step two. The problem is, is they're not taking the actions in the steps of what they need to do. So then they just keep going, going, going. And the next thing you know, they have 500 emails and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm overwhelmed. This is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you want to have success, you need to follow the directions. Moving into review number five is it says, we live in a world of personal interest and not about reality. All agents say EXP is excellent, but it's not. Using comments like all agents, like, come on. Agents want to recruit and all EXPs is the great, is the great name and have to have a large numbers of agents. I have experience in the real estate area, but I obtained the license this year and they require mentoring. From the mentoring program, I did not receive a call. The agent never communicated until I did, then ask for a change of mentor and it has been two months. 
They are disaster in structure. And even Grant Cardone seminars they have is old. Okay, I'm going to take this in steps because it's a long one. So I do agree that the Grant Cardone training that they had was old Grant Cardone training. However, this is what Grant Cardone says. In the training, if you actually watched it and paid attention, as he said, this training is old, but this is the same sales training that works today as it worked four or five, six, 10 years ago. So there's no reason I need to come in here and keep updating it. And I'll tell you that the information in the Grant Cardone University was invaluable. It completely changed a couple of the ways I do things. And I found a lot of success and it was a free tool to EXP agents. So just because the videos on the training were old, doesn't make it irrelevant. And the thing with the mentor is I could see this happening. And I'll tell you what, I've had agents join me, get a mentor assigned to them, and they never hear from the mentor, just like this person had happened. Like I tell all my agents when they join and they need a mentor, I say, let's get a list of mentors. We'll call them, contact them, and then we'll make sure that they're the right fit for you. EXP will just assign you a mentor if you are not asking to select a mentor. So my advice is if you are a new agent and you're watching this and you are going to be assigned a mentor, make sure you are getting a list. And if you don't like your mentor, make sure you reach out to the recruiting department and you are harping on them to get you a new mentor. Don't wait around. This person's like, I waited two months. Don't wait two months. Don't even wait two days. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. Come on, moving right along. It says, I don't see a system that helps generate leads for new agents or you have money for marketing, no clients. Everyone is on their own. So for new agents, do not be convinced that EXP is very bad training and the broker and agent want to have more agents. I don't even know if this person knows how to write English. New agents need a guide to getting clients, especially if they don't have family or friends in town. For old agents, it may be good if they want to live off the commissions of the new agents because since they entered, I did not see anyone as a work team. So this person obviously had a bad taste in their mouth. They're talking about agents recruiting to get revenue share. And I'll tell you what, if I recruit an agent in UCAP, I'm going to make 2,800 bucks a year off of your total volume. If you cap, every time you pay into the cap, EXP pays a little bit back to the upline. Here's the deal. I'm not getting rich off of one agent. And if someone thinks I owe them time. So if, if I, if you listen to me as your sponsor, I am not now your coach, which is what she's referencing. $2,800 a year is not an amount of money that now turns the sponsor into a coach. When you charge $1,500 to $10,000 an hour for coaching, and now somebody wants it for $2,800 a year, you have the wrong expectations. There's also the Fast Start series, which teaches you how to generate real estate business. It also teaches you how to use the EXP lead, lead generation systems. EXP has a relocation division. They have an REO division. They have an express offers division. They have lots of different divisions. You don't even have to pay for them to be in the system, but it sounds like they didn't follow the bouncing ball. They didn't go through the fast start series. And this is what happened. You get lost because you don't follow the process. There is new agent onboarding. There is new agent processes. I can tell you right now, just by reading this, they didn't follow the process. EXP needs to improve its systems, communication, management, training, and courses. Some agents are not good to be teachers. That's true. Agents need to be honest talking about EXP. This year, everyone was happy, but when the seller market changes, many agents will review their, their CV because it's not based on good training or good support. So I will tell you that every agent's going to have struggles when the market changes like it is now. Inside of EXP, they do 40 to 80 live trainings every single day. And if you're going to take your business to the next level, you have to be uh, take ownership in yourself. We're all independent contractors. We're all 1099 contractors. We use eXp as a platform to get it to as a leverage point. So eXp, in my opinion, is a very affordable brokerage. I did 185 transactions last year and I paid eXp less than 30 grand. I made six figures plus back in revenue share and I got a decent amount of stock. eXp actually paid me to work there. But what I do is I have ownership and I actually have outside eXp training that I invest my money into. Just because you're at a brokerage, it is not a one size fits all. And this is what happens when agents get into real estate is they automatically expect that their brokerage is going to be the end all be all to their business. The brokerage is just a platform. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna be pleasantly disappointed in every brokerage if you think some brokerage is out there just gonna start handing you high quality leads. No brokerage out there hands high quality leads. They might give you crappy low quality leads that convert one out of a thousand but then that's just a giant waste of time. So when you talk, when this person talks about having no friends or family in an area and she doesn't know how to generate business, I could tell you in two seconds how to generate business in an area where you don't know anyone. My business partner was an agent 
that moved to an area and he only knew real estate professionals. We had to figure out how to make that work in an environment where he knew no one. And guess what? Now we're doing over 185 deals a year. So moving on to the next one says, this was written in October, 2021, the worst experience I've ever had with the brokerage. You receive absolutely no help or support. I was stood up multiple times by my broker when meetings were scheduled. After asking for help, some of my questions were ignored. I lost deals due to lack of communication on their part. Don't expect any help on the weekends either. My broker also refused to offer support. And after bringing it up to their attention, badmouthed me to others. They also tried to cha charge me for my brokerage fees after I left the brokerage. Highly unprofessional and incompetent brokers. So I don't know where this agent's at. It doesn't say, here's the deal. I can't say, speak on behalf of all the brokers out there, but eXp is a growth company. So they add layers of support based on agent count. So every time the state grows, they add more layers of support. So some states have one broker. Every state has a managing broker and then they have supportive brokers. So they could have one managing and then eight to 12 or even one supporting broker. And then they also have a contracts division and they have an accounts payable division. That's in every state. So typically, if you have a problem, you go into EXP world and you submit a ticket and you're able to speak with them directly. So I've showed this many times in my videos where I walk right into EXP world. We can select any state. And it says right there, if there's no agent available, there's also uh, you you can contact them. This is how you get a hold of them. I've never had a problem in my two and a half years here with ever getting a hold of a broker. I've never not had a question answered. Um, have I heard stories of the same thing? Absolutely. The, everyone's not perfect, but I think this is a piece, you know, I've, as you see, I found seven out of tens of thousands of reviews where they were, you know, low quality uh, reviews. And I just wanted to bring those up. So is there other brokers out there that are acting like this? I can only speak for the states that I work in and I've never had an experience like that. So do I believe that deals were lost because of the broker? I would say maybe it might've happened once, but saying it consistently happened is probably not true. If, if a deal is going to fall apart, it's typically falling apart. And there's also levels of this. So you can always take, there's a, not only is there your broker, there's also a managing broker. And then there's a, the managing broker also rolls up to a regional manager. So there's always escalation levels of support. So if you're not able to get a hold of someone, you can always just keep going higher. And then if you have to go up to the COO and the CEO, it's easy. They're all in workplace chat. You can send them a DM in two seconds. and then. Review number seven, this was written in July, 2020. Obviously this is two years ago. Things have definitely changed, but it says, I think they should improve the support system. It's better to speak with an actual human being rather than doing it online because when you need help, you can't get a hold of anybody. It's very frustrating with eXp. You have to do everything in the virtual world. When you're there and ask for someone, they tell you that you need to speak with this person and they keep transferring you. If you try to email them, they won't reply right away or they do. It's to tell you to speak with a different department. So they'll keep bouncing you around the fees could be less, but the splits are rare. So here's the deal. If you aren't going to the right division and department, guess what? They're going to pass you around. But if you went into eXp world and just walked in there with your avatar, or you can DM people in workplace chat, you can even call them. You tell them what your problem is. But if you don't know where you're going or what you're doing, all you have to do is ask somebody that does. If an agent called me right now, you could ask me any question that pertains to eXp and I'm going to give you the right person to speak with. This is the problem. Everybody gets overwhelmed and frustrated. And when they don't onboard the right way, it leads to this. Every single review in this in these bad reviews, I can tell you, is because they didn't onboard the right way. This is the same with every other company. You know, some agents are going to require more handholding than others. And maybe EXP isn't the right place for them. However, I can tell you with over 80,000 agents here now and seeing my business and lots of other business agents' business explode is it is the right fit for a lot of people, but I can tell you that it's probably not the right fit for agents that need super high level support. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you are an agent that is super demanding and high maintenance, then you're going to have to pay a big hefty price tag for that, which is perfectly fine if you're willing to do it. You saw in one reviews, they said they went to a brick and mortar and earn and paying more, but they thought it was worth it. And that might be what you need. However, you need to understand exactly what that is before ever deciding to do anything. And if you want to have a conversation about eXp Realty, whether it's good reviews or bad, there's only one way to do it. You got to reach out, give me a call, shoot me a text, send me an email, even schedule that Zoom down in the description below. However you want to get a hold of me, I got your back. I'm making a move. Or 
just having a conversation about eXp Realty. And until next time, we'll catch you later.